We now come to a very special part of this uh, ceremony, and I'm sure part that will give us all something to make us a little wiser. The graduation address gives us the opportunity to hear from a distinguished member of our alumni community. And we're very fortunate today that the address will be delivered by the Honourable Justice Lex Lazary. Justice Lazary is the principal judge of the criminal division of the Supreme Court of Victoria. He's on a practice as a barrister from 1973 and was appointed Queen's Counsel in 1990. He was a prosecutor initially, but went on to practice predominantly as a defence barrister, appearing in numerous murder, rape, armed robbery, fraud, and other criminal trials until his appointment to the bench of the Supreme Court in October 2007. Prior to his appointment, his honour acted in a number of renowned matters, including as senior counsel assisting the coroner in the inquiry into the 2003 Canberra bushfires, and as Australian defence counsel with Julian McMahon for Van Nguyen in Singapore and Myron Sukumaran and Andrew Chan in the Bali 9 case. I now have much pleasure in inviting the Honourable Justice Lex Lazary to deliver today's graduation address. <clears throat> Chancellor, deans of faculties, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The obvious first thing to say is congratulations to all of those who have graduated <clears throat> today. This is one of those days that you will always remember. I will remember my graduation in this very place in 1972. It's a long time ago. I offer particular congratulations to your friends and families. They're the people I'm sure who have supported you uh, probably for years, uh, nagged you when they thought you needed to be working and it's time for both you and for them to relax and celebrate. Because I've been coming to this campus for a long time, and although I would prefer not to remember the numbers, I can't help but reflect that it's in fact just over 50 years since I walked into Monash in February 1967 to commence a law degree. The university at that stage had been going for six years. And in 1967, there was no building for the law faculty. The law faculty had only started three years earlier. The law faculty shared the, what was then known as the Hargrave Engineering Faculty. It didn't seem to me we had a great deal in common. The law school building was opened the next year in 1968. Now in those days, as a school student, I'd been a reasonably poor student. I'd taken the Mark Twain approach. That is, I would not let my schooling interfere with my education. But having arrived at the fledgling Monash Law School, I have to admit that my academic performance continued to leave quite a bit to be desired. By the end of my third year, Professor Enid Campbell asked me to consider whether really law was for me. The existence I lived and enjoyed in those years, of course, is simply no longer possible. Because now for you, many of your predecessors and your successors, there is far too much, perhaps, pressure and cost. Fortunately for me in that time, I learned a lot about life. I learned about the freedom to express myself and I hope to a degree that that's what you also have had during your time at Monash so far. To turn to back to 1967 for a moment, it was a very different time from 2017. My favourite example of that, which perhaps may not mean much to many of you, is that during the year 1967, the, the St Kilda Football Club were the reigning VFL Premiers. That's never happened since, and I may never see it happen again. Much more importantly, in 1967, there was a referendum in Australia. And in it, Australians voted overwhelmingly to amend the Constitution to include Aboriginal people in the census and to allow the Commonwealth to create laws for them. 90% of Australians voted in favour of that referendum, somewhat more than the recent postal survey. It was a very important step, of course, but really only a start on the road to meaningful recognition and reconciliation with Indigenous Australians. 
On the more negative side 50 years ago, indeed in February 1967, the last man executed in Australia, Ronald Ryan, was hanged at Pentridge in Melbourne after the determined efforts by the then Victorian Premier Henry Bolte in that same year, who in that same year was awarded an honorary degree from Monash. As you might imagine, at the time there was a real issue about that. So to the extent <clears throat> that there is still work to do on closing in the gap between Indigenous Australians and the rest of the country, it is now on the younger generation, on people like you, that we will depend for progress in the future. To the extent that 50 years later there also remains much work to do to end capital punishment in countries like the United States and China, it will be also up to idealistic millennials to do that work as well. To the extent that I have a social conscience, I acquired it at this place, on this campus. I hope you've done the same thing. And some reference was made to that a bit earlier in the observations at the start of this ceremony. In the 1960s at Monash, I joined the demonstrations against apartheid in South Africa and the war in Vietnam. The students who organised and protested in those years actually made a difference to our country. But there is so much more now to be done. I must say, I'm very proud to have been part of that. I determined when I, left this when I left this university, I would not forget what I had learned here, and I haven't. Back in 1966, the year before I started at this university, as far as our parents were concerned, our job as students was to get through university, if at all possible, in my case that didn't prove as easy as they'd hoped, obtain a degree and earn a handsome living. So we did what we could to comply with those expectations. But the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, there is so much more than that. Because having come here and having become qualified for something, we now have the opportunity, as I had and as you have, to do something about our world, to make a change, to make improvements. So if I have a message from 50 years ago, it is that the world needs you to be active in the world. It needs you to be interested it needs you to be involved. You now have the tools and the knowledge that can make a difference. And we depend on your generation to effectively get out there and do it. I'm not trying to make you for a moment feel guilty about having succeeded. But it does mean that with the opportunity to prosper comes the opportunity to help. And particularly those who most need your assistance, whatever your professional discipline is. Those sorts of things can be done by being involved in the public conversation, whatever your opinions. If it appeals to you, for example, join a political party, go into parliament, get involved in social issues, improve the national conversation. You only need to turn on the television to see how the national conversation needs to be improved. Join a group that helps at a social level, give of your time. If you're inclined to do it, take up a human rights course, a course that you feel strongly about. And whatever opinions you do hold as you go forward and as you come across the people who need your help now as young professionals, bear in mind there is one quality that simply cannot be dealt without, done without rather. That quality is empathy, a feeling of caring about those who could not have the opportunities that you've had, and the opportunities that you've had that have brought you to this ceremony today. Do you know, after World War II, those who studied the actions of the Nazi defendants who were put on trial at Nuremberg decided that the main feature which linked them all was a genuine incapacity to feel with their fellow man, a complete lack of empathy. In my work as a criminal lawyer and now as a, a criminal trial judge over many years, I've had the misfortune to deal with psychopathic killers who are devoid of empathy for their victims. In all likelihood, that empathy has been destroyed by mental illness or drugs or some combination of both, but it is a very chilling situation to be in. So recognise the importance of empathy. Don't become so involved in your professional advancement that you become oblivious to the needs of people that you can help. Make empathy, if you like, your word for the day. And bear in mind this from the great Nelson Mandela, who said in his book, Long Walk to Freedom, 
A nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens, but by how it treats its lowest citizens. The message from all this is to make sure you capitalise on your opportunity, and then having done that, or in the course of doing it, contribute to the improvement of your community in some way. As I said, I, I don't ask you to do that from a feeling of guilt. You're entitled to be congratulated for the effort that you've made to get to where you are now. And you should enjoy it and you should celebrate and so should the people close to you. But earning money is only a small part of life's challenges. And if, when you reflect on it, you think you can make a difference, you think you can improve something, then you almost certainly can. So I congratulate you all. I, wish, I congratulate you all and I wish you well in your chosen careers. Enjoy the moment, enjoy the celebrations, but do start to ask yourselves and to ponder how you will make a difference in the world in the future. Thank you.